What do you do with all those extra courgettes you've grown? <laughs> your freezer's full and you've even forgotten about a few courgettes and they've grown into marrows. Well, I've got the perfect, most delicious solution for you. Welcome to Moggy Box Craft. I'm Debra and today we are making marrow chutney. No, we're not. Well, we are making marrow chutney because it's a marrow now. It was a courgette. If I'd picked this sooner, it might have been a courgette. But now it's not. It's it's about a bloody foot long, so no longer classed as a courgette, is it? Doesn't matter, it's a courgette marrow recipe. You can use either. Marrows are better because there's more of them. <laughs> so you get more chutney. I've made this courgette chutney quite a few times now and it's always a massive success. Even when I put in the wrong vinegar or slightly wrong quantities, it always turns out really, really good. So. Let's get started. I got the original recipe from this book, Preserving. It's such a handy book to have, so much good information. If I find a link to this book, I shall put it in the description box below for you guys. The first thing we're going to need is a marrow or a courgette. I'm going to peel it, core it, and then cut it into small cubes. I suppose we should start by cutting off the ends. And to make this a little bit easier, I might cut this into sections. Yeah, I think this should make life a little bit more easier. So now I've cut that into slightly more manageable pieces. I'm going to cut off the skin. Our courgette has now been peeled. I'm going to cut that into quarters. Then we're going to core it and remove all the seeds. And then chop into small squares. Then repeat for the rest of your marrows or courgettes. I've finished chopping the courgettes into small cubes. That's how they look. So I've got 1.5 kilos and I'm just going to pop them into this. A salad spinning dish. Or you could use a pasta drainer or a sieve. As long as it looks something like this. I'm going to pop the cube courgettes into my strainer. And now I'm going to sprinkle on a tablespoon and a half of salt. We're just going to sprinkle that over the top of the courgette. And now we wait for an hour. So I might have forgotten about my salted courgettes. <laughs> so I've rinsed them with cold water and give them a good dry and pop them into a pan, ready for cooking. It's now time to add the majority of our ingredients into this pot and get cooking the chutney. What are we adding to this mix and how much? So I've got 450 grams of carrots. I've just popped these in the food processor to make chopping them a little bit easier and to make sure they're really tiny. Beats great in them, doesn't it? Then we've got 300 grams of onions, or two or three large onions. Again, I've just popped these through the food processor because who actually has time to grate onions? No one. And if you do have time to grate onions, I can still suggest you should get a food processor. It's much nicer. <laughs> you do a lot less like onion crying. I've got 150 grams of crystallized ginger. Again, I've just chopped this up a bit smaller, just what incorporates better into the mix. Then three, 300, Christ, don't put 300 tablespoons of mustard seeds in. <laughs> oh no. Three tablespoons of mustard seeds. You can use yellow or black mustard seeds. I've used both yellow and black mustard seeds because I had them in my cupboard. One and a half tablespoons of turmeric. Don't get this anywhere, it stains everything. Oh, oh, oh well. I might stain my spatula. Never mind. Then I've got three medium chilies. I've left most of the seeds in here because I do want a little bit of a kick to it. Although I have removed a few because I think it'd be quite fun to try and grow a few chilli plants from these seeds. And lastly, I'm going to add 1,125 ml of apple cider vinegar. Give that a good stir. Oh, that looks good already, doesn't it? So, the only two ingredients I haven't added yet is salt and sugar. But we'll get to that in a little while. First I'm going to give this a really good mix, incorporate all the ingredients. So now I'm going to pop this onto the stove, turn up the heat and bring it to a boil, and then simmer it for 25 minutes. Or until everything is quite soft. So after the chutney had been simmering for 25 minutes, it was time to add the final two ingredients. 
So into the pot, add 375 grams of sugar and a tablespoon and a half of salt. So give that a really good stir. And we're now going to simmer this for an hour and a half or until the mixture reaches a nice consistency, a nice chutney consistency. So after an hour, I thought it was still looking a little bit lumpy. So I've just taken a potato masher and just mushed out all those extra lumps. While my chutney was simmering away, I've been sterilising jars. I just saved these jars up over the year and then when I'm ready to use them, I just put them in a big pot of water and boil it. And that usually kills everything. So, while these jars, oh they're not quite hot anymore, while these jars are still slightly warm, we're going to get them filled. Every year I tell myself I'm going to get myself one of those larger funnels to make this process a little bit easier and I always forget. So I'm going to be using a ladle and probably making a whole load of mess. <laughs> but never mind. I've just been saving salsa jars. <laughs> They're a nice size for chutney, I think. You want to get your chutney into your hot jars as fast as possible. So when you put your lid on, the pot button gets sucked in and it's sealed properly. This is just going to be a mess. You know it, I know it. Yum. So let's get this lid on quick. Well, this isn't as messy as I remember. I shouldn't have said that. Oh no. Oh, it was all going too well, wasn't it? I knew it. Knew it. Knew that wouldn't last long. Just need to be a bit more careful when I'm doing this. All my chutney is now sealed up in jars. I think I've gotten seven, seven pots of chutney. That's not bad. I'm going to leave this to cool down, get some labels on it. Oh, wow, that's still quite warm. So in a month, this chutney is going to be perfect to eat and can store up to two years. If you've enjoyed this video and seen how I turn courgettes into courgette chutney, let me know in the comments down below if you're going to try the recipe and if you do, let me know how you got on with it. If you guys have any courgette recipe suggestions, pop them in the comments below because I would love to hear them because most years I'm completely overrun with courgettes and I've no idea what to do with them all. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. Of course, subscribing is optional, but it is very much appreciated. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. And today we are making courgette, courgette, courgette chutney. <laughs> this is probably the most unsafe thing I've ever done, but that's okay. How much of a mess am I going to make here? Probably loads. Ah, already we've made a mess. I'll stick this camera on so you guys get a better view. Maybe. Oh, no, the is going to go dead. No. I cannot personally think of a better way to use some extra courgettes. It's pretty much the only way I can think to use some extra courgettes.